So the NFL draft was over the weekend, and of course, as we said on the live show on Thursday night during the first round, hope springs anew during the NFL draft. Everybody thinks that these are the picks and these are the moves that are going to make a team successful uh, moving forward. And from that point on, everybody thinks that they can win everything. They got the right guys. Their rival got the wrong guys. This is going to be perfect. I, let's just talk about the quarterbacks for right now. We'll, we'll just move into what happened with those because we were a little bit shocked that there was only one quarterback taken in the first round when we talked about it on Thursday night. That is not a common thing to have happen, especially now with how important the quarterback position has become. Do we have any record as to when the last time that did happen? I think it was like 2007 or 2008. Uh, I don't have it pulled up, but I, I believe that was the last time that we had uh, just one quarterback taken in the in the first round. But I I don't know the last time that we have not had a quarterback taken in the second round and only one in the first round. Like that's the crazy thing. I I don't know that that's ever happened. Like I'm I'm yeah. sure in like the 70s at some point maybe, but that was that's the big surprise from this is. You know, Kenny Pickett goes number 20 to the Steelers, and then none of the other guys get drafted in the second round at all. Now, obviously, on Friday, you've got the second round and the third round, so you did have guys that went in the third round, but I just, I was shocked. You had three guys picked in the third round. Desmond Ritter went uh, pick 10 in round three to the uh, to the Falcons. Malik Willis went pick 22 in round three to the Titans. And then Matt Corral, round three, pick 30 to the Carolina Panthers. So first off, I guess I guess we'll start with this. Uh, Matt Corral going to the Panthers, I think, kills any chance of a Baker Mayfield trade with Carolina. you agree with that? Well, so that was what was being reported. They were, they were real close to a deal. Uh, I'm thinking everybody wants the Browns to eat a bunch of the salary for Baker. And I think the Browns could have traded him but they, but you know, they don't want to get, they don't want to pay the salary. They want you to take Baker in a contract, and nobody was willing to do that. I think that's dumb on the Brown side. I agree. And the reason being, and of course, it's easy for me to say this because it's not my damn money. But I, I don't know where losing him for nothing, and you're going to still end up paying a large chunk of that salary anyway. Because if you cut him, you still owe him the money. And you only, only you only owe him the difference of what somebody else signs him for, which is going to be chump change. Why? Why would you do that when you could just eat some of that money anyway and get a second round pick for him? There's no doubt in my mind they could have gotten a second for Baker. Why would you not do that? Well, it definitely wouldn't have been from the Panthers because they didn't have a second, did they? No, I'm just telling you that that. I mean, I, yeah, I see. I, I see like, where you're coming you from. You could have gotten a second round pick for Baker Mayfield if you were willing to eat the entire salary. Look at what the 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 the, the Eagles got for Nick for, uh, for not Nick Foles for uh, Carson Wentz. They got a monster deal for Carson. They had to eat all the salary. Okay, all right. Now, all right. Now that last year is over with, they ate that salary. Who gives a shit about the money? They got an extra first round pick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So quibbling over money, this is why bad owners are bad and great owners are great, is because they look at it like a game. They understand that $18 million will be a blip on a spreadsheet in two years from now, and nobody will give a damn about it. Uh, you're not wrong. You you are not wrong about that. Uh, I will say this. I'm, I'm looking, uh, apparently this morning, it says, uh, you know, Big, well, no, never mind. It, it says that the Browns still, to this point, cannot find a deal for Baker Mayfield. Um, yeah, they're going to end up either cutting him. I mean, there's a world where they keep him on the roster. Which is which is absolutely crazy, right? But I, I did mention this a few weeks ago. Uh, like, the idea that, okay, they may not have a quarterback. Uh, they've got Jacoby Brissett. But when it comes down to it, if you've got Deshaun Watson suspended for a lengthy amount of time, who would you rather have, Baker Mayfield or Jacoby Brissett? And and I kind of, I, I think Baker Mayfield is the better quarterback. No, Baker's but, the better quarterback. The problem is, is what happens in the locker room. Exactly, what that's what I was going to get to. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Like who, 
who do you want to play with? And I think more people yeah. in that locker room would rather play with Jacoby Brissett. So I'm I'm with you. But uh, as far as the the quarterbacks in the draft, let's uh, let's discuss Kenny Pickett going in the first round. We talked about that one already on the live show. You can go back and listen to that in podcast form or on YouTube. Uh, Desmond Ritter being the second quarterback taken overall. I, I mean, I had a bet on him to be the first quarterback taken overall, so it doesn't surprise me he he was the second one. Uh, but he has come out already with all kind of statements now that he's gotten to Atlanta. It was like I'm not leaving without a Super Bowl and blah blah, blah all all this stuff. He he has a chance to actually win that starting job. Not immediately. I think that's Marcus Mariota's job this year. But I could certainly see him learning the ropes and taking over in Atlanta. That seems like a pretty good fit for him. Do you kind of agree there? Yeah, I do. I, I think I think I think that's a hell of a deal. I think Atlanta did a really good job with the draft. And uh, you know, I, I like him, so some of its biases. I, I thought all along he was one of the two best um quarterbacks in this draft. As far as talent goes, I don't know that he is, uh, you know, up there, up there. But I do know that he goes about the game differently than a lot of these other quarterbacks. He is incredibly mature, uh, very, very smart on the field. Like that's that's a big selling point to me. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. The next one, the third quarterback taken was Malik Willis going to the Titans. Uh, and cheers to the Titans uh, for you know not we we questioned what they were doing when they traded A.J. Brown, right? But when it comes to taking Malik Willis in the third round, that's not a reach. That's, I mean, that's maybe underselling the amount of talent that you're getting. It's going to take some while, or it's going to take a while for Malik Willis to fully develop into an NFL quarterback. I think we all know that because he's got a lot of kinks he's got to work out in his game to be a much better passer uh, like, the, like the league requires. But you've got a ton of talent there. And you still got Ryan Tannehill that you are never going to be able to get out from under that contract. So play this thing out, and you could have your quarterback of the future right there, and you got him with a third round pick. You you feel good about this one? Yeah, no, I I, I do. I, um, man, I like Malik. I know everybody else in the world didn't. Um, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I think he can be good, and you know my yeah. opinion on Ryan. I just don't think. I don't think he's special. And as soon as I know you're not special, like making it to playoff games don't matter because a team does that. It, it, it's great quarterbacks win playoff games, and I just don't see him ever being that. Oh, um, I, I agree with you on that 100%. I, I still don't like the KJ Brown pick uh, trade. I, I love Burks. He was my favorite receiver coming out of this draft. But you're getting, you're getting rid of a bona fide guaranteed guy because you don't want to pay him. Well, what the hell are you going to do if Burks pans out in three years? Just not pay him either and well, they, trade him away? So let, let's talk about the wide receivers. Doing this? Let's, let's talk about that. The, the idea that Tennessee ran with on this was we don't have to pay these you know big-time wide receivers. They, their thought process is, from what we've seen in the draft over the last you know, couple of years, we can draft playmakers. Very easily, because there are so many of them. There have been so many wide receivers that have come out that have been NFL ready right off the bat. I mean, Jamar Chase is the best example. Justin Jefferson as well. Now, I don't think that they're all made like that. So this might be a bit of a miscalculation by the Titans. But their thought process here is we can go get somebody that does what A.J. Brown does. I don't, I don't know that I agree with it, but I think that that's what the Titans and some of these other teams are starting to, to do. This is the problem with that logic. You named off two guys that came in the league absolute 100% pro ready to wreck the league, right? Yes. yes. There were like 19 receivers drafted in the first two rounds of the last two drafts. All right. Two of them, and that's, that's a gross miscalculation. Uh, there were about five guys that were drafted in that window of time in the first round that were great, great, okay? So okay. I just don't understand um, why you think five out of the 12 or 15 or however many were drafted. That's a good calculation for you to think I won't take the Jalen Reek. 
Like, how do you know you didn't get the Jalen Rager? How do you know you didn't get the Nikhil Harry? How do you know you didn't? Because you just gave up the moon for that. That's the yep. problem with giving up a guarantee. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I mean, the, the Ravens took Rashad Bateman in the first round last year. It, it's similar to around the same pick, right? Uh, he was number 27, and he did basically nothing. Like, it, it, he, he was not ready for the league. Um, now he was coming off of an injury as well. But Devontae Smith uh, played pretty well last year. Jalen Waddell played pretty well. Jamar Chase, uh, you know, uh, who, who else do we have? Uh, Kadarius Toney, uh, everybody thought that that was a reach for the Giants what, last what year. What you I'm told the 53 men in the, ro- in the locker room, you're not trying to win this year. Yeah. Because that's, Waddell and Smith and all those yeah. guys were really good, but they ain't ready to win right now. Agreed. Agreed. And that's, that's so the other part of this. All those guys that are working their ass off to win a championship this year, sorry, we're not interested. Yeah, by, by trading A.J. Brown, that's, that's exactly what the Titans did. I mean, that's exactly what they did. Uh, you know, when I'm looking at these classes, I don't know that they're going to be able to do this all the time. I just I don't buy into the idea that you can just go draft a playmaker. Like, I just don't think it's that easy. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what they end up doing with it. Uh, as far as some of these other quarterbacks go, Matt Corral, your boy, went at the very end of Friday night to the Carolina Panthers. We just talked about it, but we hadn't talked about Corral. Uh, I think this is a good fit. This is a job that he can certainly win. I don't know if he's uh, really ready to take the job day one, but if they're sticking with Sam Darnold, uh, why could he not be the guy that takes over You know, midway through the year? You you feel, you know, maybe that's what David Tepper was thinking in, you know, I can bring in Baker Mayfield for $18 million, or I could bring in this kid who... I'm going to tell you this. Matt is going to be better than Sam Darnold. Matt is going to be better than Baker Mayfield. Matt is going to be a really, really good football player. He's just got to get healed from his ACL, which today, ACL shouldn't scare anybody. No, I don't know... Oh, yeah. I don't. I couldn't tell you the last time a player got hurt with an ACL that didn't come back because of the ACL. Oh, agreed. Yeah, they they have fixed that thing. Like it is ACLs uh, do not last that long, like at all. Yep. So, so as long as Corral doesn't lose himself between rehabbing and getting ready, and he goes there, he gets the playbook, he follow, goes to practice every day, he rehabs, he starts building a relationship with guys. I think Corral could do really, really well in Carolina. I think so, too. I think so, too. All right, the surprise of the draft to me was Bailey Zapp being picked before Sam Howell. <laughs> I, Sam Howell, you know, he does have the, the whole, he's only an actual true junior. He's only been playing for three years now. Uh, so that certainly plays, you know, maybe to help him because he'll have a longer career. But, uh, but, Howell went round five, pick one. Bailey Zapp went round four, pick 32. Howell goes to the Commanders, and Zapp goes to uh, the New England Patriots. Uh, Now, first off, I will say this. We've talked about this in the past. I don't know that the Patriots drafting somebody uh, necessarily means that they think this one player is better, or that the rest of the league believes this, um, because I don't know how much I trust the Patriots when it comes to drafting. But... uh, but the fact that, that he went before Sam Howell was a bit of a shock. What did you think about the Patriots taking uh, taking a quarterback here? Uh, them taking a quarterback a year after having drafted a quarterback who seems to be your future is a little weird. Uh, very much so. Considering how many holes I think the Pats have when it comes to depth <laughs> and other needs that they could have addressed. This might mean they want to move on from buying Brian Hoyer. He it's very like possible. Yeah, kind of the grown up in the room to be the backup, but maybe they're saying no. We need a real legit backup. We don't want to spend a lot for him. Um, I'm I'm very I'm trying to be very sensitive when it comes to this matter because it matters to me. It's important to me. I I love Bill and I trust Bill and what Bill has given me over the past twenty something years. It's it's something nobody in the world has ever given. But man, we're we're this draft. I could be. I hope I'm wrong. Now, 
I say this with the understanding that I know nothing compared to what he knows about football. But I feel like we're getting close to needing to take the keys away from Grandpa. And it's a real hard conversation to have. It's it, here. Let me let me read. I don't know how he's building the football team. I don't understand. That's that's what now. I was. Yeah, that's All, exactly what I was the thinking. Last decade, I I never questioned. It. I I did but crack I've up got, because I was keeping up with the draft on Friday night when I was at uh, the Bill Street Music Fest, and when I saw that the Patriots drafted a wide receiver, Tyquan Thornton out of Baylor. Uh, which the prospect grade that NFL's Next Gen Stats gives him says average backup or special teamer. Like he was the guy that uh, that ran a four two eight forty, according to <laughs> the uh, the NFL Network. Right, he's super fast, but you know when you look at his numbers and everything, he he wasn't exactly, uh, you know, the, the, I don't know that he was a second round guy. I'll say that. And, and we all know that the track record for him drafting wide receivers is not great. But when you look at all of the other picks as well, right, he took Marcus Jones, the cornerback out of Houston, who might be great as like a kick returner. Uh, but Marcus Jones is like five foot eight and not exactly a, a stand-up corner, right? He's like he, he plays corner. He's more useful, I think, in the league as a, uh, you know, as a kick returner. Then you got round four, you got Jack Jones, cornerback out of Arizona State. Round four, you got Pierre Strong, the running back from South Dakota State. You got Bailey Zapp in round four. Then you go to round six, you got Kevin Harris, the running back from South Carolina. Sam Roberts, a defensive tackle from Northwest Missouri State. And then you got Chasen Hines, who is the center from LSU at the end of round six. And then at the end of round seven, you got Andrew Stuber, who is an offensive tackle out of Michigan. I, It, it feels like we do this every year, and and it's just, I don't know that it was a good draft for the Patriots, and I do not understand what they're doing. Like everybody else seems to have for the Patriots in a, in a long time. Yeah, everybody else seems to have at least some kind of strategy. And with this, it's like hey, you're just throwing dart to the dartboard. Like I don't understand. I don't. It. I don't either. Gary. I mean, drafting two running backs and two cornerbacks in in the third and fourth rounds. Like what? <laughs> what are what are we doing? I I don't I don't get it because it felt like the running back room was was pretty full anyway. Um, but I I don't know I don't know. There's a lot of holes that needed to be filled, and they did not fill them via the draft at all. So uh, so Sam Howell, let's let's move over to him. He obviously the Commanders like they are going to need a quarterback at some point. Yep. That's a pretty good fit. You know, you get a guy in the fifth round. We've seen guys be drafted late. I mean, Dak Prescott was a fourth-round guy for the Cowboys. Like, we've seen stuff like this happen where you get them on a pretty cheap deal and you just see, right? You just see if it'll work. Uh, I don't know that anybody thought that Sam Howell would fall this far, but, I mean, you get him in the fifth round, like, that's that's not bad. Like, that that works. You uh, You feel like Ron may have stumbled on something here. I think he got lucky. I think he got lucky. Um, I don't know that I love Sam Howell. Oh, agreed. You know, as a prospect in the fifth round, I'll take him. Yeah, I mean, just somebody so that, you know, that hadn't had a quarterback in a long ass time. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, we got three other quarterbacks. It was Chris Ola uh that the Steelers took in the seventh round. Skyler, he's uh, from uh, South Dakota State. Skyler Thompson from Kansas State, round seven, pick twenty six to the Dolphins. Uh, Skylar Thompson is one of those guys that I think is just going to, he's just going to do anything. And then I don't know that there is a more fitting person to be Mr. Irrelevant than Brock Purdy going to the 49ers with the last pick in the draft. <laughs> we talked about Purdy on, uh, on the show on Thursday night and, and he gets drafted, but he's Mr. Irrelevant. Do you, uh, did you feel like that was the perfect fit for that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, he was irrelevant all last year, so so why not? Yeah, exactly. Why not? Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.